Hello and welcome. I'm Samantha Simmons. We begin in Libya, where there are fears that the number of people who've died in the catastrophic floods there could reach as many as 20,000. A tsunami-like river of floodwaters swept through the port city of Derna on Sunday after two dams burst. Joe Inwood has this report. Derna is a city overwhelmed. First by water, then by the scale of the humanitarian catastrophe the flooding has caused, and finally overwhelmed by grief at the loss of life. God give me patience, my heart is with you, this man cries as he sees the body of his young son. It's now becoming clearer that this was a natural disaster, but enabled by human actions. The Wadi Derna River had two dams, both failed. The upper one, 10 kilometers from the town, had a capacity of about 1.5 million cubic meters of water. When that burst, that water, with a weight of about 1.5 million tons, rushed to the sea, sweeping the second dam and about a quarter of the city with it. We had warned the authorities since last week, no, for years, that the dam had cracks and needs to be maintained. We said it and nobody listened to us, and now the whole of Derna is flooded. The blame will inevitably fall on the politicians and warlords who have tried and failed to run this country since the fall of the dictator Muammar Gaddafi. It is blame they will try and avoid. It has been an enormous shock and I don't want to point the blame at anyone or create controversy. Even if all measures had been taken, there would have been losses, massive losses. While the overwhelming majority of victims will be Libyans, others were caught up in the disaster. 74 Egyptians, all from the same town, were swept out to sea. I've lost four members of my family, Hassan says. My son called his brother last Thursday for the last time, telling him that he will get clothes for the children. Oh, my dear son, he finishes. International aid is starting to arrive. But the same crumbling infrastructure that allowed this disaster to happen also prevents the help getting through. When you walk on the ground of Derna, what you smell is the smell of corpses, and what you hear is the screams of women and children. We have what it takes. We need more rescue teams. The situation is way worse than it seems in the media. It is hard to comprehend the full scale of this tragedy. The force of nature and the failings of government saw entire families entire communities simply washed into the sea. Joe Inwood, BBC News. Well, live now to our Middle East correspondent, Lena Sinjab, who's following all the developments. Lena, welcome to you. What aid is getting through to those who so desperately need it? Well, basically, uh, some of the you know governments that have sent aid, you know, rescuers and you know uh, medics have just started to arrive into the port of uh, Derna, that is the most affected by the storm, uh, Daniel. I mean, but the the mass, the the scale of of the, uh, the situation is massive, and will need more and more people arriving, more and more medics. In, there are thirty thousand people that are now homeless, and they need shelter, they need food, they need clean water. But the priority for everyone on the ground now is to recover and retrieve bodies. Uh, there are reports of uh, the sea, you know, throwing bodies like constantly on the shores, and the numbers are likely to be higher and higher with the with the hours and days unfolding. Yeah, and we understand that the two opposing governments that run the country have agreed to work together. Tell us more about their efforts. Well, this is the, the, you know, if there is any glimpse of hope is that, uh, you know, these two opposing governments have put their differences aside. This is a natural catastrophe. It's unprecedented uh, that the country had uh, witnessed and they cannot uh, do it while they're fighting. This is the time to join forces and provide help. And they will still need help from international community. We've seen reports of um, Egypt, UAE, Turkey stepping in and arriving in with, the, with their medics, but also 
also other countries in the West uh, are also stepping in. This is a natural uh, disaster, as we heard also in the report, uh, joined by man-made one because of you know uh, the, the weak uh, structure of the dams. But the uh, but the results of this and and the the price is going to be really high, and it's going to take weeks and probably months uh, before rebuilding uh, this area. But the priority now is you know counting the debt. Yeah, counting the dead and also retrieving the dead. There's a, a huge danger and concern about diseases now spreading, isn't there? Absolutely. Médecins Sans Frontières is also uh, joining uh, today because they also worry about diseases spreading because of the bodies covered and the rubbles or in water. You know, uh, as we heard also from uh, in the report that, you know, the smell that you can you can smell in the city is just all smell of dead bodies. So that's something that needs quick and swift um, action and needs like big number of forces who are experienced uh, to find the bodies, probably also dogs to sniff the, sm the, the smell of bodies and find them and, and retrieve them and bury them duly. Okay, Lena Sinchar, thank you for bringing us up to date from Beirut.